Chapter 2 Self Exploration as the Process for Value Education Recap In Chapter 1, we discuss the need, basic guidelines, content, and process of value education. We saw that the value of any entity is its participation in the larger order. As human beings, we feel happy when we are fulfilling our participation, our role, that is, we feel happy when we are living in accordance with our value, that is, living in harmony with him, living in harmony with other human being, as well as with every unit in nature and existence. Value education is about understanding our values and living accordingly. We also mentioned that the process for value education is self-exploration. In this chapter, we will elaborate on the process of self-exploration with the help of some examples. What is self-exploration? Self-exploration is a process of seeing the truth about the reality on our own right, by our own observation and investigation. Through this process, we understand the reality and our participation with it. For instance, Human being is a reality. Through self-exploration, we try to see and understand the human being as well as its participation with other human being. Our articulation of human being and our role with the other human being is just a proposal for you to explore, to see and verify for yourself. You can find out which process is more acceptable more assuring for you. A process of self-verification, self-exploration on your own right or a process of assuming what is given without verifying on your own right. It is for you to decide what a reality is and what our role that is value, what is valuable with that reality is. Whatever is given in the book is just a proposal for you for self-verification and self-exploration. The simplest way to verify a given proposal on your own right is by referring it to your natural acceptance. If the proposal is naturally acceptable to you, it is right for you. If it is not naturally acceptable to you, it is not right for you. If you ask yourself what is naturally acceptable to you, to be in relationship with your family members or to be in opposition with them? The answer may be quite obvious and you would come up with a spontaneous to be in relationship. How did you get this answer? It is from your natural acceptance. When we refer to our natural acceptance, we directly get the answers. We don't have to learn them or get them from outside or refer to some instrument. Sometimes we might be in opposition with someone, even with our family members, but that is not naturally acceptable to us. With a feeling of opposition within, we feel uncomfortable within and want to resolve the situation. It is the feeling of a relationship only that we always aspire for. Regardless of whether we are living in relationship, or opposition, our natural acceptance is always for relationship. We are referring to this faculty as our natural acceptance. It is innate in us, a part and parcel of our being. Each one of us has this faculty and therefore all of us have the potential for self-exploration on our own right. We do not need any special qualification for it. We only have to start referring to our natural acceptance. This book systematically represents a series of proposals and to begin with you explore these proposals. As you explore, verify the proposals you are able to distinguish between what is right for you and what is not. What is valuable for you and what is not. Example. By now, you would have been able to verify that the relationship is naturally acceptable to you 
and opposition is not. This self-exploration is a process of dialogue. To begin with, this initiated as a dialogue between us and you, we make a proposal and you verify it. Soon you start asking questions to yourself. It becomes a dialogue within you. You start exploring the answers for your fundamental questions by referring to your natural acceptance. This internal dialogue is between what I am and what I what naturally what is naturally acceptable to me. Soon you start asking such questions to yourselves. Gosh. Soon you start asking such questions to yourself. It becomes a dialogue within you. You start exploring the answers for your fundamental questions by referring to your natural acceptance. This internal dialogue is between what I am and what I what is naturally acceptable to me. The dialogue within. This internal dialogue is between the two realities what I am and what is naturally acceptable to me. What I am is my current competence on the basis of which I live. It includes the way I feel, the way I think, how I make decisions, what I expect from others and all of that. It has to do with my desires, thoughts, expectations, etc. What is naturally acceptable to me is my natural acceptance. It is my intention. It is what I really want to be. It is a basic reference which is a part and parcel of me. Check if you are able to see, be aware of what you are. Similarly, Check if you are aware of your natural acceptance. Now, if you want to be aware of your own desires, thoughts and expectations or your natural acceptance, where would you look? Of course, you have to look within. When you are able to see both these realities, you can find out if there are they are same or they are different, whether they are in harmony or they are in contradiction. You may when ask as to why this is important. So let's take an example to find out. Let us say that you are thinking of taking revenge from someone. After two hours of thinking how to take revenge, you drop the idea. Now, during these two hours, you were, were you comfortable or uncomfortable within? Not all comfortable, isn't it? You dropped the idea. So nothing was expressed to the other person. It did not affect him. But what about you? You made yourself uncomfortable for two hours. Now if you can see that this feeling, feeling uncomfortable was because you had a feeling that it is not naturally acceptable to you. In general, a contradiction between what I am and what is, re what is naturally acceptable to me will result in disharmony within. Now when, uh, only when what I, what I am and what is naturally acceptable to me are in harmony, we are comfortable within. When we are in harmony within, we are in a state of happiness. When we are in a state of contradiction within, we are in a state of unhappiness. A very process of being in this dialogue starts facilitating one's progress towards harmony. We start becoming more and more comfortable within, that is our self-evolution. 
Through this book, we are trying to initiate and facilitate the process of dialogue, self-exploration in you. Let us now identify the content of self-exploration and also look at the process in more detail. The content for self-exploration. What should be the content of self-exploration? Whatever is essential for us to understand for moving towards a fulfilling life should naturally form the content of self-exploration, isn't it? Thus, the content of self-exploration basically has the following two subparts. A. Desire. What is our basic aspiration? B. Program. What is the way to fulfill this basic aspiration? First, we want to explore into our desire as a human being and second, we want to explore in the, into the program to ensure the fulfillment of that state. The desire is essentially the basic aspiration, the aim, the objective, the purpose, what we want to achieve, what is our goal. The program is the process of achieving the desire, the action to achieve our goal. Are both these questions important to you? Is it important for you to find out what you, your basic aspiration is? Is it important to find out the program for the fulfillment of your basic aspiration? Now these are two important questions for all human beings. Now let's see if we have answers to both these questions. Are there any more questions that we are left with? That, that is to ask if we know our basic aspiration and we know the program of fulfillment of our basic aspiration. What other questions are we left with? If we can get the answer to these two questions, practically all our questions are answered. In fact, most of the questions that we have generated are because of the clarity, the lack of clarity of these two questions. If we get the answers to these two questions, we only have to now Act. The process of self-exploration We have already started identifying the process of self-exploration. Now we can look at it in more detail. As mentioned earlier, whatever is stated here is a proposal for your self-exploration. Verify it on your own right, on the basis of your natural acceptance. Do not assume it to be true or false, right or wrong. However, verifying it on the basis of natural acceptance is only part of the process. What more is needed will now be presented. Look at figure 2-3. It represents the complete process of self-exploration. In the figure, if you see on the left arrow, from the proposals to right understanding, here, it denotes that we need to verify it, the proposal, on the basis of your natural acceptance. And once you verify the proposal on your basis of natural acceptance, then as shown in the right arrow, you need to experientially validate it. How do you validate it? By living according to it. And by living according to it, if the behavior with the human being leads to mutual happiness and work with the rest of the nature leads to mutual prosperity we can assess that the proposal has to be right understanding the first part of self exploration is to verify the proposal on the basis of our natural acceptance once we have verified that a proposal is naturally acceptable to us we are sure that it is something which we would like to live with 
The second part of the self-exploration is experiential validation. It means trying to live according to the proposal. In living there are two parts. One is behavior with the other human beings and the second is work with the rest of nature. When we are behaving with human being, on the basis of this proposal, we want to verify whether it leads to mutual happiness or not. If it leads to mutual happiness, it is a right proposal. If it does not lead to mutual happiness, it's not a right proposal. Similarly, when we are working with the rest of nature, on the basis of this proposal, we want to verify whether it leads to mutual prosperity or not. If it leads to mutual prosperity, it is a right proposal. If it does not lead to mutual prosperity, it is not a right proposal. As an example, let us explore the proposal. The feeling of respect is natural in relationship. As a first part of the exploration, you can verify whether feeling of respect is naturally acceptable to you or feeling of disrespect is naturally acceptable to you. The second part is living according to the proposal. That is, you have the feeling of respect in you and now you are expressing this feeling of respect in your behavior with the other human being. Find out whether it leads to happiness in you and in the other, that is mutual happiness. If it does, the proposal is right for you, otherwise it is not. I can see that this feeling of respect is naturally acceptable to me. Therefore, it leads to my happiness. Similarly, this feeling of respect is naturally acceptable to you. Therefore, it leads to your happiness as well. That is, it leads to mutual happiness. And hence, the second part of the self-exploration also holds true. Putting these two parts together, now we can see that the given proposal, the feeling of respect is natural in relationship, is a right proposal. We can also verify this in case of our interaction with rest of nature. Let us check whether the feeling of nurturing or enrichment in our interaction with the environment is natural. You can verify whether the feeling of nurturing is naturally acceptable to you or feeling of exploiting is naturally acceptable to you. This is part one of the self-verification. Further, we can proceed to the second part, living according to it. By nurturing and enriching the environment, does it lead to mutual prosperity? If we can see that the enriched environment facilitates better food production leading to our prosperity and it also leads to prosperity of the environment in terms of its enrichment, we can conclude that it leads to mutual prosperity. Thus, this proposal passes both parts of self-verification. Therefore, this proposal, the feeling of nurturing the environment is natural, is a right proposal. What we are verifying for any proposal in the second part is, does it lead to mutual fulfillment in our living? Mutual fulfillment means that a. Our behavior with other human beings leads to mutual happiness. B. Our work with the rest of the nature leads to mutual prosperity. At this point, there may be a question. Is it necessary to experientially validate a proposal if it is not naturally acceptable? It is an important question. What is being said here is that both parts of the self-exploration are essential. We may not be very sure of our natural acceptance or we may not have the confidence that we really have the right answers within, that we can really be self-referential. So we propose that you experientially validate the proposals. Of course, if you are very sure that a proposal does not pass the first test, you need not go to the second test. When we are able to verify a proposal, both by way of verifying through natural acceptance and by way of verifying through experiential validation, the ultimate outcome is right understanding. We will explore into the details of right understanding in the chapters to follow. Natural Acceptance Distinguishing between acceptance and natural acceptance 
natural acceptance has to do with something fundamental something related to our purpose something related to our basic desires when we ask a question related to these we get a definite answer from our natural acceptance for example is happiness naturally acceptable or unhappiness naturally acceptable is it naturally acceptable to live in relationship or in opposition what is naturally acceptable to nurture your body or to exploit it now for all these questions we get a definite answer when we refer to our natural acceptance some of these characteristics some of the characteristics of natural acceptance are a natural acceptance does not change with time what is naturally acceptable to you today is the same as was naturally acceptable to you yesterday and what will be naturally acceptable to you tomorrow for example our natural acceptance for the feeling of trust for the feeling of respect in relationship remains invariant with time a child naturally accepts having the feeling of trust 20 years later when he she becomes a youth he she still has a natural acceptance for trust when he she grows into a old person he she continues to have a natural acceptance for the feeling of trust there is no change in the natural acceptance with time for any given person b natural acceptance does not change with place natural acceptance acceptable feelings like trust respect affection etc remain invariant with place these feelings are naturally acceptable to me when i am in india in america in africa in europe or in any other place like that my natural acceptance to keep the body healthy does not change with place no matter where we are we have the same natural acceptance at all the places see natural acceptance does not change with individual natural acceptance is the same for all of us it is a part and parcel of every human being it is part of our humanness we can check with naturally acceptable feelings once again and find out if they are naturally acceptable to indians to americans and to any and every human being our assumptions our likes and dislikes our views on issues may vary but the feeling that are naturally acceptable to one are also naturally acceptable to every human being in that sense natural acceptance is universal that is why understanding our natural acceptance we can also understand the natural acceptance of the other d natural acceptance is uncorrupted by likes and dislikes or assumptions or beliefs we have taken the examples of these above also when we ask the right question we can see our natural acceptance and it is there natural acceptance remains unaffected by our likes and dislikes our belief systems are and our uh, preconditionings even if they are very deep and in and influence our thoughts day and night for example even if we are preconditioned for years not to trust anyone if we ask the question to what is naturally acceptable trust or mistrust the answer is in favor of trust e natural acceptance is innate it does not need to be created whatever be the background of a person this faculty is very much there for example the moment we think of 
disrespecting someone how does it feel within comfortable or uncomfortable similarly the moment we think of opposing anyone how does it feel are we at ease or we feel uneasy of course uneasy why is this happening because we have the faculty of natural acceptance as a part and parcel of our being and it keeps hinting that what we are feeling thinking or doing is in harmony with our own natural acceptance or not we can start referring to it at any time it is always there if natural acceptance is definite it is for relationship harmony and coexistence which is universal this we can directly verify by asking what is naturally acceptable to us relationship or opposition harmony or disharmony coexistence or struggle so when we look at into the details of relationship harmony and coexistence in chapters to follow we will ask these questions again regarding each and see that these three relationship harmony coexistence ultimately provides the guidance for our living in harmony and happiness our natural acceptance is innate in each of us it is uncorrupted and it is universal that is it is invariant with respect to time place and person it may seem very simple to begin with but we shall see that this becomes a very powerful way for us to know what is ultimately true for us on our own right all we have to do is to start referring to it and validating it in our living since we have so many strongly held beliefs we may confuse them with our natural acceptance the experiential validation gives us another opportunity to examine the proposal that is why both the parts of self verification is are essential let's not assume even if even this to be true let's explore and find it out for ourselves what natural acceptance is not if we ask is eating rice naturally acceptable or eating wheat naturally acceptable one may ref- prefer rice and another may prefer wheat so the answer to this question may not have all the characteristics mentioned above on the other hand if we ask is nurturing your body naturally acceptable the response will have all the characteristics mentioned above these are two different type of questions the first question is about a specific choice of how to nurture the body while the second is about our basic participation with the body natural acceptance is about value our participation with a, an existential reality it is not about choices of how to fulfill that participation distinguishing between acceptance and natural acceptance our acceptance may be based on likes and dislikes assumptions preconditionings beliefs uh, world view perspectives etc let's say you like the taste of a particular food item you have an acceptance for it to check if this acceptance is same as your natural acceptance you can ask a more fundamental question will this particular food nurture the body or not if you find that it will not nurture the body you can conclude that particular choice of the food is not in line with your natural acceptance your acceptance for that food particular food is not your natural acceptance like that 
we may develop acceptance for many things which are not naturally acceptable to us at a fundamental level we may have uh, an acceptance for competition exploitation while our natural acceptance is for cooperation nurturing we might have accepted struggle for survival survival of the fittest but our natural acceptance is for relationship we have a natural acceptance for peace but we might have an acceptance for war like that we can see that our acceptance and natural acceptance are two different things appraisal of the current status in forming our perspective on how to live our life we get many inputs from family friends educators newspapers social media etc there is social pressure to follow societal norms we tend to conform to be accepted to avoid being the odd one out we also accept authority unquestioningly all these external influences play a major role in the development of our perspective most people can be seen living by prescribed rules and guidelines essentially letting others or circumstances dictate their lives a sort of enslavement their conduct is also quite varied one at home another at work yet another with friends and so on lastly this seems to be the state of affairs in our world today despite these challenges there remains an innate human desire to live a happy meaningful life for that deep down we want to know to understand things as th- they truly are and live by that understanding we look for avenues to fulfill this need in the family educational institutions and the society in general the state of present day society indicates that fulfilling this need to know has to become a central theme of education when we evaluate how society homes educational institutions colleges and universities deal with youth today we can discern two distinct approaches in some cases the educational and societal inputs are structured as proposals these environments encourage self verification critical thinking questioning and open discussions youth in such settings are empowered to draw their own conclusions this approach augments independent thought and self confidence aligning with the idea of self exploration conversely in other instances inputs are delivered in the form of rigid do's and don'ts along with given statements youth are often guided to follow what is provided without room for questioning or independent thought this approach tends to reinforce preconceived assumptions and can result in youth accepting assumptions without critical examination or rejecting them completely society homes and educational institutions play a crucial role in shaping the youth largely the second approach is taken in education today and youth are not well enough prepared to navigate the complexities of modern life make informed choices and contribute meaningfully to society for yourself do reflect on which of the above methods is naturally acceptable to you in this book we are taking the first approach of self exploration we encourage you to take everything as a proposal neither assuming it to be true nor false but verifying it on your own this approach empowers you to engage critically and independently with the material fostering self assurance and informed decision making we aim to explore our inner selves 
to discover our true desires which when pursued can lead to mutual happiness and prosperity this book offers proposals to help us grasp reality as we dwell into these proposals and find meaning they become our thoughts and potentially shape our understanding the way ahead if we observe a child it has great deal of curiosity it naturally and enthusiastically seeks to understand what's right learn various skills and do what is right initially it goes by what is given learns by observation and practice the child learns language like this for example however as the child grows it yearns for assurance that whatever it has picked up will indeed lead to happiness and prosperity they do take inputs from those who understand life like parents friends and teachers but for true understanding it requires internalizing the inputs it requires self exploration only after we are able to see or know the reality as it is we become self assured self confident and happy we are then able to make decisions for mutual fulfillment free from external pressures let us now see what happens if we are able to go by exploring within and what happens otherwise by assuming without exploring if we can see things clearly for ourselves through self exploration and if these are reinforced by observation and practice it becomes part of our understanding once we have understood something we are sure we are self assured we are self confident that living like this will lead to mutual fulfillment in living when we are able to validate this understanding it gets further reinforced such a state may be called self organized we are able to make decisions that are right that is decisions in the interest of mutual fulfillment that is mutual happiness and mutual prosperity in this self organized state we can absorb external input without succumbing to external pressures peer influence or personal whims instead we see things clearly for ourselves and help others recognize their potential for living in a mutually fulfilling self organized manner on the other hand if you are unable to see the things for ourselves and our assumptions remain unverified the feeling of assurance is absent and we are not self confident rather in adverse conditions we may become reactive and try out various even arbitrary options in this process we are susceptible to outside influences and pressures as our own verified assumptions are not stable in this case generally we tend to live by prescriptions do's and don'ts that is our living is largely dictated by others human beings or prevailing conditions this is a state of enslavement enslaved by our own wrong assumptions as we have seen in the developmental journey of any child imitation serves as the initial building block of understanding they learn language behaviors and various aspects of life through imitation initially they obey instructions work within basic disciplinary boundaries and exhibit obedience however as they mature the child's desire to question and make independent decisions naturally emerges at this juncture the child requires both appropriate content in the form of proposals and the right process of self exploration they need encouragement to verify information through self exploration fostering a holistic perspective on human existence as discussed in chapter 1 this perspective encompasses understanding harmony across various levels of human existence from the individual to the family society nature and existence itself moreover it involves the development of the competence to live harmoniously at all these levels ultimately 
leading to a fulfilling life indicated by happiness and prosperity. We will discuss it in more detail in chapter 9 when we discuss education as one of the crucial societal systems. This holistic approach emphasizing harmony and holistic living is anticipated to become a central focus of future education and cultural development. Important implication of self-exploration. It will be quite educative to learn that the process of self-exploration can result in the following important implication which will be conducive to a fulfilling life. It is a process of knowing oneself and through that knowing the entire existence. It is a process of recognizing one's relationship with every unit in existence and fulfilling it. It is a process of knowing human conduct and living accordingly. It is a process of being in harmony within and in harmony with the entire existence. It is a process of identifying our innateness and moving towards self-organization and self-expression. It is a process of self-evolution, evolving as a human being through self-exploration. Now let's elaborate a bit on each point. First point, it is a process of knowing oneself through that knowing the entire existence. Going through this process of self-exploration, we are able to know about ourselves. We are able to see our natural acceptance. We are able to see what we are in terms of our desires, thoughts and expectations. We are able to see whether things are in harmony or disharmony within. It is a process of knowing oneself. The self is the knower. When we know the self, through the self we can know about the other. The other human being, the rest of nature and ultimately the entire nature and existence. It is important to know oneself first. When we are sure about ourselves, only then we can know about other things though properly. We can be sure that we are not looking out looking at the world through our colored perceptions. On the other hand, when we try to understand things around us without first being sure of ourselves, all the preconditionings we have, we have within, the contradictions we have within, reflect in our perception of the world. With that, we, when we interact with the things around us, we end up with mixed results, sometimes happy and other times unhappy. Second point, it is a process of recognizing one's relationship with every unit in existence and fulfilling that relationship. Through self-exploration, when I know about myself, I know about the other, I know about the nature and the whole existence. When I am able to recognize my relationship with the other units in nature and also I am able to see how to fulfill these, that relationship. It is a process of recognizing one's uh, relationship with every unit in nature in existence and fulfilling it. Third point, it is a process of knowing human conduct and living accordingly. Definite human conduct is living in a manner that we are able to fulfill our definite relationship with other units in existence, in nature and existence. When we know what definite human conduct is, we express it in our living. It is mutually fulfilling nature conduct. Therefore, first we know the self and through the self we know the other units in nature, in existence. Second, we are able to identify our relationship with the other units in nature, in existence. And third, we know what our conduct as a human being needs to be. 
and that we live accordingly leading to mutual fulfillment this is how we can develop this competence to live with definite human conduct the major role of education is to facilitate the development of the competence to live with definite human conduct fourth point it is a process of uh, being in harmony within oneself within the entire existence when we know what definite human conduct is we can live accordingly in this way we are able to see we are able to live in harmony within and with others and ultimately we are able to live in harmony with the entire existence it is desirable and also naturally acceptable to all of us fifth point it is a process of identifying our innateness and moving towards self organization and self expression now we can see that through self exploration first we know our natural acceptance what we really want to be what is our essence our innateness once we know what is naturally acceptable to us we are able to live in accordance with it then we are in harmony with it this is self organization when we are in harmony within our behavior and work is going to be naturally acceptable to others also therefore we will be living in harmony with others too when we expand this to every unit in nature in existence then we will be able to live in harmony with the entire existence this is that this is the self expression in its real sense six point it is a process of self evolution through self exploration when we do this self exploration we discover what is naturally acceptable to us and also become aware of what we are the very process of being in dialogue within facilitates self improvement we are basically aligning what we are what we really want to be we are lining up our desires thoughts expectations with our natural acceptance but doing this gradually we are more in harmony within and therefore more in a state of happiness within thus this process leads to our evolution the purpose of this book is to initiate or augment a process of self exploration in the reader you can check for yourself whether this is desirable for you or not we are placing this up front so that you have a full view of where we aim to reach it is this exploration that will help us develop a holistic perspective that was mentioned in chapter 1 as we go in further chapters these points will be detailed and clarified to conclude the complete process of self exploration which is depicted below yields right understanding as a tangible outcome right understanding can be recognized as follows it is assuring we feel assured we have no doubt about it this is because it is based on our natural acceptance which is intrinsic to us inseparable from us we only have to become aware of it once we are aware of it once we know it it remains obvious no amount of input or preconditioning otherwise can influence or change understanding based on natural acceptance it is satisfying we all have the need to know to understand when we understand something it is satisfying it is fulfilling for us it is universal we are able to see that right understanding is definite and invariant with respect to time it holds good in all time past present and future space it is same at all place and locations individual it is the same for every human being 
to take an example let's examine the proposal the feeling of respect is natural in human human relationship we can verify that the feeling of respect is natural acceptable to us we can validate that when we behave with other human beings with a feeling of respect it is naturally acceptable to the other as well we can conclude that having a feeling of respect leads to mutual happiness when we understand this by the way of self exploration we can see that it is very assuring assuring in the sense that we have no doubt anymore whether feeling of respect is natural or feeling of disrespect is natural whether we need to have a feeling of respect or disrespect in our relationship this will remain certain in us even if we may have feeling of disrespect from time to time due to our preconditioning it is satisfying as it fulfills our basic need to know further we can see that it is universal as this is true in all time today tomorrow in all places and for every human being do keep exploring it in case of the outcome of self exploration does not fulfill any of the above three criteria it means that it is not the right understanding it would be preconditioning or we have made a, a mistake in looking into our natural acceptance so we need to continue exploring self exploration ultimately results in right understanding of the entire existence that is realization of coexistence understanding of harmony and contemplation of relation shift once we have this uh, right understanding and when our imagination is fully guided by it we reach to a state of continuous harmony and happiness within this is expressed in our behavior our work our, in our participation with every unit in nature in a harmonious manner it ultimately becomes the foundation for a undivided society and universal human order further when this is passed down from generation to the next generation in continuity generation after generation it forms a human tradition of happiness and prosperity for every human being this is the coveted outcome of value education the process by which we try to understand is very important what we intend to do through this book is to initiate facilitate and support a process of self exploration in you which is starting as this dialogue between us and you